Deborah, with her 30 years of being an entrepreneur and creating over seven companies, knows exactly what it means to accept the mission. When you make that decision, when you accept the mission to become a solopreneur, to take yourself and your talents to market, then you embrace a life of not only unlimited possibilities, but also the unknown. It's an elixir of fear and bravery that only someone who's taken the leap really understands. On our show, Deb digs deep with her guests to highlight what you, the listener, wants to know. The stories, the whys, and the hows to navigate the journey to success. Get ready to hear from some of the most incredible mission takers from Generation Z to Boomers. So sit up, perk up, and get ready to be blown away. Now here is your host, Deborah Drummond. Well, welcome back. We've been going through all of the ways that I can describe you guys. I just want to do a big shout out to you. I think you're the best. And then we've been coming out with other cool words as well to describe this incredible podcast family that we've created. Um, So thank you so much for the subscribing. Thank you so much for the information and sharing. And look, at if you're out there and you want to hear about something, you know where I am. So go ahead um, or maybe come onto the stage yourself. Anyways, this is a home for entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs and creatives and media to share what they're doing. But you know what? I know that you're all so all out there in the audience because you're like, I need some ideas. I want to learn some things. I need inspiration and motivation and hearing about other people's stories. Honestly, it's those gemstones that you take at a certain point when you've been in your business for a little while. You're like, that's great. That's a new idea. But also, you know what? This can be a pretty funky experience, you know, taking on the mission. What does that mean? Different things to everybody, except one thing. There is one element to taking on the mission that we all had to do. At some point, we were either pushed, dragged, or we were the person pushing or dragging, but somehow there had to be an internal yes. At some point, you said yes to yourself, and then the rest, well, that's your story, right? And so I'm so excited today because of uh, an experience that I had with a woman. Her name is Estrelita. And yes, I did check to make sure I said it correctly. Um, and she's in an industry that I, is close to my heart. Um, as you guys may or may not know, I owned a private health studio for 27 years. I worked on 30,000 clients and I know the bliss of what it's like to help and serve other people achieve a state of Hmm. Coming back to self. That's what I think it is. And when I was able to walk into her studio um, and have an experience for myself, you knew when you walked in, there was this sense of coming back to yourself, but also this sense of professionalism. And I absolutely loved that. And so look, this is a woman who's an entrepreneur. And I love how we were just sharing how she went from entrepreneur to entrepreneur, because once you start to get balance, once you start to get a rhythm in your business, you can start adding additional kind of maybe revenue streams for for the business, but also passion streams for you. It kind of goes both ways. So I'd love to bring her onto the show and have her share with us her experience becoming an entrepreneur and then an entrepreneur um, in the world of spa and caring and retreats. And doesn't that sound good, you guys? (laughs) Are you starting to relax a little bit? You're like, spa and retreats. And also technology. Okay, enough, enough of talking about the experience because it was lovely. Anyways, thank you and uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. I am really thrilled to be here. I appreciate the invite. Absolutely. So we were talking about what it's like to be an entrepreneur. When did you hear your calling? How did that door come and knocking? What happened for you? Honestly, being an entrepreneur, the idea has been with me probably for all of my life because I was surrounded by entrepreneurs. My father was an entrepreneur. My aunt had a string of hair salons. um, And I was inspired from a young age to think about that as an option. It took me, uh, I think, several years. I did start, I've been a part of a number of startups, um, including a couple that I did with some other people on my own. But it wasn't until uh, when I had my son and I was a single parent uh, that I recognized that I really needed something that was going to give me uh, time freedom. Uh, and also an outlet for some for creativity and ideas. And that's when I, by accident, started this firm, firm, I call it firm, but it, my skincare clinic, which has evolved over the years, but it all centered on that technology. I was exposed to a piece of technology that helped me. I was so blown away by it. Um, I was doing some marketing work for that company. And then I thought, this is so cool. I want to be able to do something with it here in Vancouver. And that's, it's, so it's always been the crux of my business was skincare, that, that the difference being the technology piece. 
And isn't that interesting? So many times that happens to people, right? Like, um, you know, I, I work with a company in distribution. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. Obviously, I get to hang out in this world all day. How cool is that? And a lot of times it was like, I saw something, I was eating something, I was drinking something that I'd never, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? This is amazing. How many are available? Um, we talk about filling the gap. You know, there's like people are like, you know, I, I worked for a company and I noticed that every time I was trying to do business with them, they kept wanting this and no one could provide this. And so I thought I'd go over here. So here you are working and doing marketing for a company and then seeing something that they have and you're like, hmm. Maybe, maybe this would be good for me. So off you went to the races. How long have you been in business? Uh, 10 years. We just celebrated our 10th anniversary in June. I started with one room in the space that I'm in. And I now have the whole space, which is six rooms. Uh, so we've grown organically into that room. I, I have four of them for my business. And I have two that I do part-time rentals with. And, you know, part of it was that differentiation of what I wanted to do that was different from what everybody else was doing. And that I was also really focused on clean, clean use of products together with the technology. I'd had my own experience in that same year, just before, just before I started the business of being, I did a test and I was off the charts with lead and I couldn't believe it. I didn't know where it came from. I was shocked. I started doing research. I also got a, I want a book called the ugly, uh, not just a pretty face, the ugly face of the beauty industry. And in that, I read that there was things like lead in lipstick. And so it outraged me that there are companies, huge companies making products aimed at women in particular that are actually not good. And babies, by the way, because Johnson & Johnson has also been implicated in a number of things around really unsafe products. And so that was another mission was to really educate people on the, the use of products and read your ingredients, know what you're putting on your body because anything you put on your skin just goes right into your body. And a lot of it is not good for us. And so that was another driver. And then also, I also saw a niche in the, the acne market. And a lot of people said to me, you're crazy to, to focus on that, this and that. Anyway, it's been one of our successful, in fact, last month, most of our facials were acne facials when I looked at my numbers. Um, and so it, it, I've proven some wrong. And that's what you got to do. You got to go with the gut. You got to do what you think is right. And uh, we've been sort of evolving the anti-aging and the acne market in tandem. My primary market is women, but women that are mothers also see the benefit of having their kids come in here for acne facials. Right. So it's kind of, it's evolved, right? And isn't that what entrepreneurship is about? It's like you come in with this one feeling or you come in with this one idea and then you can see a niche in your niche. Now, I absolutely agree and hear many times, um, particularly people that because as an entrepreneur and someone who has more than one creative idea, Many times people are advised to hone down. And I understand that they're like, you know, we now are mm, negotiating that philosophy of one thing, one time, one market, because you're, you'll hear a lot of, you know, when you are available for everybody, you're available for nobody because to differentiate yourself now in this booming market, this booming market of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs and side gigs and off the desk and on your phone and, you know, driving people's dinners around and all, all the things that are people that are doing Airbnb and all the things that are people doing for side gig business and, you know, gig economy business and, you know, um, Everybody on the show knows that my 18 year old starting his first company. There's 12 year olds starting companies, 15 year olds companies. And so everybody knows that there's probably more focus put on differentiation than there is on general application. And so to be able to go, you got an issue with acne. This is where you need to go. You got an issue with brain health. This is where you need to go. You got an issue with, you know, you want clean products. This is where you go. So I think that the shout out for having something specific even in a business that's general, I think it's, uh, I think things are, um, I think people understand that. So good on you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we try, like you said, I mean, being an entrepreneur, I, I listen, I've had many, many days of why am I doing this? Is it time to throw in the towel? I mean, it took a number of years for me to get to where I am now. It's not, it's lonely when you're at the top at, of running a business. And for mm -hmm. me, I think what got me through all of that is I've always worked with coaches and I think, you know, as a coach, even a coach needs a coach. Like you have to have somebody that you're accountable to, somebody that can broaden your horizon with ideas about what you can do that maybe you've never thought of. I always worked in cor the corporate world, which was always medium-sized companies and higher. Running a small business is very different. And nothing really prepares you for running a small business than actually getting in and figuring it out because you end up doing almost everything yourself. 
But then in time, I remember making that decision, when do I hire an assistant? When you finally do and make that jump, your life just starts to get easier. And when do I hire that you know, second esthetician? And when do I hire a bookkeeper? Like all those things, you just have to make that decision to do it, set that intention. And then all of a sudden you're able to sort of work on your business more and more and more. And then thus you can grow your business and you can scale your business. Um, and so that's a process too, right? Is recognizing you need a team around you. It's not you know, it's for the faint of heart, you cannot do this thinking that you're just going to kind of, you know, be able to do it all yourself. It's not feasible. And it's really, if you want a life outside of work, it, it's not practical. Right. Well, I had a really good friend of mine once say to me, um, when I was in the build of one of my businesses, and she's like, she, she pulled me aside, we were at a big conference, and she pulled me aside, she goes, let's go do lunch. And I'm like, okay. And this woman was probably making four to five times my income at that point. And she's like, isn't this thing about balance hilarious? <laughs> I go, yeah, when someone's, when is someone going to burst that bubble? She goes, when you're in the build, there is no balance. When you're in the build, there is no balance. And get comfortable in that your balance looks very different um, than what balance would look like if you're working for someone else or, you know, based on your priorities. And she goes, your balance changes every day when you're an entrepreneur. Today, I'm doing this. You know, today, you know, the joy of being an entrepreneur. I was like, mm, I think I'm going to go grocery shopping this morning because no one's there. I went to the grocery store and there was one person in front of me and I'm like, Ooh, I like it. I like it. You know? So I, I think that, uh, I just love, love that saying that she said, and what about you? Because you were saying that you were a single mom of your son and you're starting this business and we all know the fluctuation. How did you, how did you maneuver that? Did you, did you bring him in? <laughs> Did he have to work at the business? No, uh, he's he's come in for facials. <laughs> um, but he, no, he. I mean, he's only eighteen now. He's just off to university second year. Um, but I mean, for me, it was the time freedom of being able to go to his class and volunteer at lunchtime, or being able to pick him up after school. And I think for a lot of women, these are the decisions that we need to make when we start to have children. What kind of a parent do I want to be? How engaged do I want to be? And for many people, it's a tough decision because working a full-time job doesn't allow for a lot of that. Um, mm -hmm. And the only thing I could see it doing was either working part-time, which I did do for the first few years um, until he was whatever, four or five, uh, and then recognizing that I wanted more and I wanted to really put my stamp on something that was myself. I had worked in partnerships before. I had worked with other people. I've had some not great experiences working with others. And I really, there was just a piece of me that was just shouting to create something by myself, for myself that could express who I am and not be influenced by the, the whims of other people. Um, and so small business is the way to go, obviously, I think with that short of being um, you know, self-employed, uh, which is not really what I want either because I really want to create a business that would work without me having to be here every day. Uh, right. So you know, when I'm away, the business is still running. When I'm you know, at home doing something or in a meeting, because I have another hat that I wear, but then th this place is still running. I don't have to be here. That was really, really important to me. I wanted, whether whatever the goal was going to be my exit strategy, which I thought of maybe I'll look at franchising it, um, or you know, just being able to grow it and having the staff in there to be able to have something, even if I decide not to work every day here, that I'm still making a money, it's my retirement. Or if I decide to sell it one day, I've created this value in it and it becomes my retirement for my retirement. So there's different ways. And I think as an entrepreneur, it's something you need to think about. You know, how involved do you want to be in your uh, enterprises? Uh, what is your exit strategy? You know, what are you thinking down the road when you start, like you hit your 50s, you know, in my late 50s, you're like, oh my God, like, I don't see myself retiring, but I think about what's life going to be when I maybe start to want to slow down. And what right. am I going to make financially with that? I, I just got elected to the um, the beauty council on their board of directors. Um, and that's one of the things that I brought to the board is to think about this, the financial health for owners. And what can we do to talk to them? Maybe like something like making it easy for them to buy their businesses rather than renting super hard to do in Vancouver, I think, because of the cost, but maybe not. Let's explore that. Well, maybe we can work with commercial realtors, work with commercial lenders to really make a, have a program where, where business owners could buy their place because when they retire, they can sell that business and or not the, the real estate part of it. And everybody knows real estate can make you good money if the timing is right and you have a good price when you buy it. So I'm really fascinated. I love money. It's energy. I love the ideas of making money in different ways. And it's to me, money is a good thing because you can do good things with it. This is a mindset that I had to work on during the last 10 years. And I did that with working with some coaches, uh, a spiritual coach at one point as well. That abundance piece is really important to me. And many, many people have blocks 
They don't even realize it. They have old programming that's actually not allowing them to step into their greatness and therefore step into the ability to make and have whatever you want. You have to figure out what you want first. And I very clear, I know exactly what I want. It does change year to year based on what I've accomplished, but I'm very, and it's why I get out of bed every day because I have goals that I want to achieve and I have a plan where I want to be in the next couple of years. So it is you, it's up to you, the individual to figure that part out. And you can't always do it by yourself. You, you know, you often do need to work with someone. I, I agree with you on many different things. The real estate piece, straight up. I think that's brilliant. Honestly, the um, you're, you're, we're drinking tea together, girl, because I, when I got my studio, just through a very, you know, serendipitous, blah, blah, blah. I was looking for real estate. And then all of a sudden things shifted, things shifted in my marital status. <laughs> and so the big, you know, the money wasn't going to go to the here, but what I did is I actually bought a, um, one of those commercial, commercial residential. Mm. And so that I knew that this was a piece of real estate that I could run my business of. Now it required me to rent a home somewhere else. So I, I still had that same cost. It wasn't like I saved myself a cost because I had to live somewhere. I wasn't living in my studio. But when I decided after 27 years of that, I wasn't going to be doing that work to that degree anymore. I still have that piece of real estate. And I think that's really important. And, and um, there isn't enough of those spaces available. There just isn't enough of those kind of zonings. But I think having something working with, the, you know, I, I know a realtor that's screaming in my head right now um, that I'd love to connect you with. I think it's a great exploratory way to go. And it's important for people to think about that, which is why I think they're now talking about, you know, it's been the big recession and now they're talking about the big regret. But People are working from their home and are like, oh my gosh, I get to write this off. This is my home. I can do this. I can do that with it. They're building homes in the back or renovating their basement so they can have their office. So all of those things. But when you are in a product-based, service-based, where you have to have people come in in that sector, you you don't necessarily going to get out your basement and have them necessarily come in there, though you can if you want to have more of a smaller practice. So I love that. I love that you certainly, that when you talk, when you talk about your coaches and I, can, I hear accountability um, I hear personal assistant, I hear coaches, and uh, I hear clarity. And that's one of the things that we talk a lot about, right, is having clarity. There's a, there's obviously there's business tools that I use and that I create for myself. And they're based on five year, one year, quarterly, you know, monthly, weekly, daily. And when you start business, you're not necessarily thinking that you have an idea of where you want to go, or maybe you are super clear, but until you've been in into business for a little while, you don't really know kind of what you're going to be navigating, right? So I think that's really important to have just really drive strong that, that focus, because like you said, when you get up in the morning, uh, here's the deal for entrepreneurs, I believe, and you know, let me know what you think. When we get up in the morning <laughs> before the day can go, that's interesting. Didn't see that. That wasn't on my schedule today. Before that happens, at least we know what we're doing it for. I think for me, it was like I was really clear I was doing it for my financial future as a single mom as well of a son who was also 18. So we have to have another glass of wine just on that alone. Um, but I knew who I was doing it for. I knew why I was doing it for that clarity allowed all of the, oops, take a look at that kind of stuff. At least it made it digestible. You know, I mean, I think we've all, if you've been in business for a while, if you haven't cried a couple of times and called your friend and went, what am I doing? Then you're not working hard enough, but, <laughs> um, no. right. But it sounds to me like at least, you know, what you were doing. And then some things happen that are fantastic that you didn't expect. And some things are kind of maybe a little funky. Well, I say every day, what I do is I solve problems. You know, there's always something coming at me. This is broken. This is plugged. You know, we need to we're out of this. And I got, so every day I'm putting out fires um, as much as I try to, you know, alleviate some of that, but that's just the nature of the beast. And it's fine. Like I, I thrive on uh, not, I don't thrive on chaos, but I thrive on diversity in my activities. Uh, mm -hmm. it, the idea of being stuck in a cubicle, working nine to five in an office building just terrifies me. Uh, because I really do like to have that sense that every day is a bit different um, and I can make it whatever it is. I can take that day off when other people are working, but that's because I'm also working Saturdays. But there's flexibility. And when I choose to work, I have that choice. And that's, I think, why a lot of people wanted to have their own their own thing. And I think yeah. the, the pandemic also for a lot of people recognize that as well, that, hey, how am I spending my time? Do I like what I'm doing? Maybe there's something else that I can do. Maybe the world of self-employment or entrepreneurship 
is now the time to do it. And I really believe that is going on, which is why we're seeing this dearth of employees everywhere. And people are just really trying that hat on to see what's available out there, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it, it, it's uh, it's an interesting time, I think, to be an entrepreneur. The you know the help is out there in some in many ways. Um, even lending, I think, is uh, maybe made a little bit easier. I think the, the pandemic certainly helped me with that too, just to get that first loan. Which I I say to people, I have my business has grown huge in the last two two and a half three years. Part of it was that I was finally able to get a loan, which was the pandemic funding that was released. It took a while to get it, but when I did get it. It's really made the difference in me being able to get new technology to actually renovate. And so I, you know, I appreciate that I had that opportunity at the time. Before that, I had tried twice to get a loan and I was rejected. And I really, that's something that I really get annoyed about. Small business are probably the most in need of easy funding. The mm -hmm. hundred dollar companies don't need uh, that easy access. It's the small guys that really need it. And women entrepreneurs have shown clearly that they are able to handle financing they are responsible they intend to pay back those loans and so i would like to see that kind of continue and just make it easier for people to get working capital because you cannot scale your business uh, i bootstrapped my business for the first you know eight years and mm -hmm. it almost to be honest my company still owes me a lot of money but i was so intent on making this thing work i was yeah. very stubborn i had to see this thing be successful and i'm so happy every day i walk in here i'm just like oh my god this thing when i think about the journey and what i've been through i it's like when my son graduated i was there was a sense of pride that came with this growth and and getting him over the finish line was another amazing feeling and i'm sure you can appreciate that too so yeah it's just we are in control but that's even more satisfying when we actually accomplish it Absolutely. So look, I want to spend a little bit of more, a little bit of time um, talking about the other side of things where, first of all, you know, I, when I'm doing this, I can hear my listeners ask the question before we move into this other, where I really want to talk about retreat, because it's one thing that you provide um, for people to come and just, oh my gosh, you guys, you got to go see your studio. It was so amazing. And um, I honestly, it's weird to say I felt like a different person when I left, but I did, I felt so, um, I just felt like everything that you guys said was going to happen for me in terms of my skin and my body actually happened. And I felt fantastic. And obviously I'm incredibly picky. So, I mean, I'm just in picky. I mean, you know, it's like a, a chef going to a place and going, mm, let's taste your best food, right? You, you, you know what you're tasting. So I had a great experience there. One thing before I hop over, because I want to talk about retreats because women don't do them enough. Honest to gosh, you know, isn't that what, isn't that on all our bucket lists? I wanted my business to be so successful that I can go to the art gallery on Tuesday and turn my phone off and go to as many retreats as I want to go to. But before, let's, before we do that, I want to talk about that because obviously that's an extension of, you know, your calling. As someone who's on the board, as someone who's been in business for a while, and as someone who's been in that sector, what are the, what are, from a marketing standpoint, because you talked about marketing as well, what is one of the things, just because for our listeners out there, they're always looking for those gem zones, what are you finding in terms of your marketing that, that's really working for you that women really want? Is it really a discount on a service? Is it really an added value on a service? Is, is it accessibility? Is it the hours that you're open? Like what are some of the things that our listeners can do to um, take care of that market even better? Well, I mean, I've used several tools over the years. I mean, ultimately the best marketing is when somebody comes in like yourself and leaves feeling amazing because it's really about that ex experience, right? How do I feel before and how do I feel after? And we've always, aimed at I didn't want a clinic feel to even though the word clinic is in my name that's really more about correction and preventative things but the vibe that I wanted was as soon as people walk in they're they feel relaxed and when they leave here they're even more relaxed and what people want that and especially over uh, because of the last few years people want that even more so now what a, a huge driver for me is I, I really uh 2019 I got a new marketing tool that allowed me to really ramp up my reviews and I went from like 30 reviews to now over to almost 200 um, and that drives a lot of my new business we also get referrals obviously from clients that are happy I have a membership which is a great value for people who are looking for that regular self-care piece as well so uh, as a marketer and I'm a trained marketer I have tried everything. And I remember having a coach once saying, well, I've never met anybody who's done as much marketing as you, but I've learned the hard way what works and what doesn't. And the other piece, I think, is that branding piece around me, the individual. 
I mean, you've been working, you've got a book coming, you've worked on books, I've done five book projects, I, I published my first book, self-published, uh, Face Your Acne, which is about acne, and then people see that, they say, oh, she's got credibility because she wrote a book, you know, and they've been doing this for 10 years. People want to trust uh, that you're, you know what you're doing, and that you know what you're talking about, and when you look at a lot of our reviews, people talk about that, they talk about how great they feel, that we were kind, and we were explaining things, and we're not over, we're not big, big seller, like pushing products on people, I've mm -hmm. uh, even well, that, that is a thing, a business tactic. I've never believed in it. I think we, we give people what they need and we work with them to really get the goals that they want for their skin. And it doesn't happen in one session um, as much as people want it to. It does take time. It, to clear acne takes time. It takes months to get acne. So, uh, so yes, it's experience and it's just being very truthful and in alignment with your values. And we have our mission, vision, values. Right? Uh, people can take a look at what, what valuable you know in, in the work that we do and i think that people see that there's authenticity i think to what we do all my institutions are well trained they're kind they're not pushy and they really want to see and work with clients and do a good job and i think that speaks spades these days for what people are wanting no that's super important for people to hear because a lot of times people will do what the industry does and when you for example when you talk about when you normally go get a facial and then they're like oh and i'm using this on you and i'm using this on you while you're on the table you know there's going to be a sales pitch coming and i am in sales i'm like you know what you believe in your product sell me double down tell me how great it is that's me i'm like tell me how great it is and if i'm interested i'm so there i'm like i'm so there but when you know that that's going on, so people tend in the industry to do the same thing because that's what people do. So just knowing your business enough or your, your clients enough or understanding enough that that doesn't sit right for you. So you're not going to do it the way everybody else does. That's also a great marketing technique, right? You don't have to do what everyone does if it doesn't feel right for you. Um, there's different things when I'm speaking that I don't do at the end of my speech and crossing things out on a big, you know, and like you too can... I don't do that, right? It doesn't feel right for me. So, um, okay, let's move on because I know we, we only have a few minutes left and I want to talk about what everybody needs. And we talked about relaxation. We all know we need it because we can feel it and breathe it. So, but you've gone one step further and you've created a whole new paradigm for people to come in. So if you are a business owner, please <laughs> listen to this. So you are doing divine feminine retreats. Do tell, my friend, do tell. Yeah, uh, so my the retreat company is called simplydivineretreats.com and I have uh, three different themes uh, and two of them I partner with other what I call subject matter experts and our, our Simply Divine retreat is happening November 4th to the 6th on Bowen Island and it's my uh, colleague that I'm working with Martina she's a yeah she's a spiritual um, she does a lot of different things with clients but the key on which she helped me was to get clear and to be connected to the divine and when we're connected to the divine which is a number of tools meditation being the preeminent one that we want it helps us be clear on who we are and what our purpose is in this life and i think for a lot of women uh they are torn in many different directions because we wear so many different hats often we are the last to take care of ourselves many women as their children start to get older they want to do more with their lives but they're really not clear what that is and I feel that as you do that work of the divine feminine, uh, that your intuition becomes stronger and stronger, and it starts to become the guidepost for you to make these decisions, to try things on. Yes, that resonates. No, that doesn't. Setting intentions. Nothing can happen without setting an intention. So our um, because of the work that I did with Martina, we got together and we thought, let's start to open this conversation up specifically to women who are maybe struggling, uh, you know, who have a lot of anxiety who you know, are thinking too much in their heads and not connected to their bodies. Our bodies are a tool for us to also work with, uh, but we just need to know how. And so this, this uh, two week, to, I guess two night, uh, three, three day um, workshop retreat, will be giving the tools how to do that set in nature. It's yoga, meditation, uh, it's movement, and uh, you know, the food will be a vegetarian. And it's lovely, it's Bowen Island is not far, far away for those of us here in Vancouver, come with some girlfriends, come on your own. Uh, you'll, you'll leave, I think, with a really a set of tools that you can use every day and you will have a greater sense of who you are uh, and maybe the, the directions in life that you need to be looking at. So yeah, right. super excited, it's a start. I wanna travel and this, the next phase is putting on international retreats, um, so, but this is our first one. Well, that's great. Um, and I want to hear, you know, because people are going to be hearing this podcast at many different times, um, just know that if you can't make it to this one, if for some reason you're hearing the dates and it doesn't work for you, then just know that, you know, 
this is what she does. And so that these retreats are always there and always available. And I love, I wrote it down, subject matter experts. Oh girl, I'm going to hashtag that one. That's fantastic because I work with other women and other men that are fantastic in their field. And what a great, you know, what a great title for them. Um, and so even as you're talking about it, you can just feel it relax. Here's something that's interesting. So many people want to do retreats. They want to do books. They want to come onto the podcast. They want to come do something where they're maybe a little nervous. And many times it's that resistance. Let's talk about that resistance a little bit. And I know that you got another meeting going and we we're so lucky to grab you today. So we're gonna wrap it up, but let's talk about the resistance that happens almost instantaneously when someone hears something that they've always wanted to do, but they're like, now I know if you're listening to me, you guys, you can't see me swaying back and forth. Well, some of you can like, we're like, Ooh, that sounds good. Mm, I've got things to do. Ooh, that sounds good. Oh, I got soccer payments for my son. Ooh, that sounds good. But you know what? My mom needs me to take care of her maybe that month or so that resistance where people really need it and want it in their souls, like, please, you know, or their business really needs to like, I've, I deal with it with the book, right? People want to come and they're like, I know I need that platform. I'm like, and you have to get over that hump. Do you experience that in retreats? If someone's out there listening to that right now, like, what do you got to, you know, what do you want to say to them? I, and again, it, it has to make sense for somebody on their journey, what they need. They've got to get real with maybe what they're, where they're at in their life and to, and to be realistic. If I want to take a step forward, it takes action. And what are some of the things that I could be doing to help take that action and and being with like-minded the sense of community I think is also super important with women we we are natural collaborators uh and I've known that from my own experience sitting on boards that you know women can get a lot done when they are in a, in a group and they mastermind and they have great discussions it's just who we are you know we're not that competitive I mean some women are obviously I'm generalizing but the sense of you know let's work together and solve problems if you have problems if you have something you're trying to do and just recognize that you're not going to be able to solve it probably you know with yourself 90 percent of your problems are going to be solved by other people and so just making sure that you understand you've got to take action and you've got to figure out what action that makes sense to you and if something resonates for you on some level marinate on it think about it meditate on it you know and talk to some people um but having a sense of a plan with how you're planning to get yourself out there a quasi medical uh, marketing plan if you will i mean there, planning is important i think you have to have a sense i always plan in january I have a marketing plan uh, for the year, especially for the clinic here. And I just want to have a sense too with what I want to do this year. But my birthday is in January, so it's a good time for me to do that. I think for all of us, you know, to have a sense of what do I want and then what do I need to do to put that into play? And if I'm not sure, then experimenting and go, going to networking events, talking to, I went to my first networking event yesterday and I don't know how long, it was great. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we, we masterminded on some problems that the women had and it was fantastic. Uh, and I've missed that because we've all been consumed the last few years. So it, it's, yeah, you can't do it alone. You, you're going to need some support somewhere. And I think just recognizing that the resistance is part of the process. Like, so when people are ready for something, sometimes they'll feel a bit of a resistance or when part of them knows that they need it, but the other part is, is fearful or unsure, what have you, that in my experience, resistance is just a great indication it's a great indication. I think it's not about um, pushing past the resistance in, in one way or the other in relationship to sales or, you know, having someone come that's not really ready to come. I think when someone has resistance themselves, I think it's worth exploring um, what that resistance is about because we're, we, we want success so many times. We want certain things so many times. And then sometimes we resist that for whatever reason. Some people will say fear of success or some people will say fear of the unknown or what have you, but just recognizing that resistance is normal it's fear and it's your ego getting in the way of you moving and stepping forward into your greatness we all have mm -hmm. you know possibilities within ourselves and yeah. you have set that belief in yourself whatever stuff you're lugging around you need to get rid of that and so there's work in life right you got rid of the baggage recognize you have baggage and then once you kind of done that clearing you can really start to focus on okay now what's the life that I'm trying to create and what are the things like what really resonates for me with what I do in my day-to-day -day activities it's a process I mean life is a process mm -hmm. and if there is resistance recognize that's normal that's actually helpful I always say too contrast is really important in life you need to know what you don't like in order to figure out what you do like you know so going through life and recognizing your patterns Fix them. If you've got things that are holding you back from your greatness, you have the power within you to be as powerful as you want, but you're yeah. the only one that's ever going to make that happen. 
And yeah, I mean, that's why I said I continue to do things that step out of my comfort zone. It's hard, no doubt. But I think once you've done it a few times, it becomes like a muscle, right? Like you're just like, okay, I'm feeling the fear, but I can step through this because I've been through this before and I was fine. Yeah. In fact, I grew yeah. a better person, right? So uh, we all have that. It's normal. We're human, you know, but it, people do it all the time and we can be, we can take, learn from that, right? And carry on. Absolutely. So uh, look, guys, we're going to wrap up a little bit here. Um, we could talk forever, as you know. Um, I'd love to do part two at some point about either moving through the resistance or, um, you know, having that other conversation about uh, what it's like to build business. Um, so please, I have one last question for you. But before we get to that question, I'd love for you to tell people it's going to be in the show notes as well, you guys, on um, where to reach you, how to reach you. Um, yeah, go ahead and just give us that information. Sure. Uh, dermabrightclinic.com is the best way to reach me. Um, our numbers are there. Uh, and it's bright as B-R-I-G-H-T. I'm on LinkedIn under Estralita Gonzalez. I'm on Facebook and uh, simplydivineretreats.com is the other way to, to reach me. Um, both places, please. I love to connect with people on social media. On Instagram, uh, Dermabright has a presence pretty much on all the top uh, platforms. I have a YouTube channel for both uh, as well, Derma Bright Clinic and Simply Divine Retreat. So yeah, please, I love to connect with people. I'm growing, obviously, uh, you know, my network as well, uh, going forward with this new business. It's a slightly different dynamic than the clinic. So looking forward to meeting more people. Awesome, awesome. It looks like you're going to have the corner of self-care super covered. Now, <laughs> I have a question for you because a big part of people's self-care is uh, mental health and it's being happy and joyful. And I kind of call, you know, I talk about the world of music being very happy, happy, joy, joy. Even when we put music on because we need to feel sad, even when we put music on to feel reminiscent. Um, and uh, my audience is very aware of the They Did It tour um, that's happening in Ireland, walking, you know, just just walking a little bit uh, to raise money for the music industry. Super excited to have some great charities that we're going to be funneling um, money to. Being so women driven as you are, She Is The Music is one of our recipients, which is Alicia Keys' organization to support women in the music industry. So we're really super excited about that um, alongside some other great charities. So my friend, you are about to embark on your own retreat and you are going to a desert island. You just you and you, and you have one suitcase and you are taking one album with you and only one, which album would it be? Uh, well, I, I would say Peter Gabriel, best, uh, best hits. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I have it at home. It's a two CD set. Um, yeah. He, he, his music has always really spoken to me for a number of different reasons, but yeah, uh, it's a hard one, but I, I'm the same. I love music. I'm always, I always have my music on and my kid's very musical, which is great. Uh, yeah. He's always creating his own music. So it's always in our, in our house. Uh, and I, yeah, it's just another way to express ourselves, but it is a, a mental health uh, movement and music together are wonderful ways to feel good, right? Create that joy in our lives, which is what we're really after. We all want to be joyful and happy. That's really the end game. Yeah. Yeah. It's a happy, happy, joy, joy. It's what I call it. Well, if your son is entrepreneurial or creative, we're going to have to do Look, at, it's been incredible. I've done some mother of course, we really focus on Gen Z in our show as well. Uh, so without going too much further into do, to do on that, you know what? We met through the art of authorship. And so we both are, are very active in books. So I just want to leave our audience with some great information. You guys know if you want to be on the show, reach out debitdubdrummond.com. If you want to know that I have some free stuff for you, I have some really good stuff for you to help you in your business. Cause look at, we all needed free and um, <laughs> we all needed free. And I have the 15 top performance tips that I've learned over the last 30 years of being an entrepreneur. Absolutely. We'll just shoot them to your inbox. Super, super cool. And now once a month, because honestly, the demand has just been a bit much and I can only, you know, I'm getting to the point where I'm booking people in three weeks. I'm happy to help you with two things. One is the arena of follow-up, which is really critical for your business. Many people are good at business, but the closing the sale part, not so much. Um, and there's all sorts of things there. And then um, innovative marketing, which is which is the new form of marketing. And I don't talk about social media. I talk about innovative marketing. Um, and there's a free class that I do once a month. So you're more than welcome. If you want any of that, please just reach out to us and we'll give you the details on that. And then to final, just to finalize or um, finish off today, talking about authorship, <clears throat> you guys know International Women's Day. The 262 book will be launching. I told you I've been keeping you posted and we have. So not only are we going to launch with a beautiful book launch on um, International Women's Day, we are going to have speakers of that at that event. Then we're going to have eight summits and it's called Stand Up, Speak Up, Show Up. Yes, you Women's Summit. And guys, you're allowed to come. You're allowed to be there. 
women speakers, but you're allowed to be there. And it will be eight weeks of summits. And then we're going to bookend. Isn't that kind of, isn't that a nice play on words, you guys? Bookend all these summits with yet another book launch for this incredible book. Um, we're expecting about 2,500 people on these launches, and we want you to be one of them. So please, uh, there's going to be proceeds going to some really incredible organizations, again, um, about helping women in business and in life. So we'd love for you to um, have you on as a guest. So if you want any of that, please let me know, and we'll get you a VIP pass to those launches and summits. And um, as of yesterday, it'll also be streamed on Roku, Apple, and Amazon. So we will be on TV. Go friends. Okay. So that being said, love you. Best audience ever. I, I'm going to be back next week. I know you are as well. And thank you so much for that. And thank you so much for joining us today, my dear friend. And we will talk again soon. Bye guys. <laughs>